In memory of the father of diabetes epidemiology, the Kelly West Award is giving to an individual who has made significant contributions to the field of diabetes epidemiology. This year, that individual is Dr. V. Mohan, and we are honored to have him here in studio with us now. Such a pleasure to meet you this morning. Thank you so much. Well, congratulations on this award. What an incredible honor. Just to get started, what are your thoughts on being acknowledged by your peers in this way? I think it's a great feeling, uh, not just for me, because I represent an institution which I built and therefore I keep telling my people that I get all these awards but I'm just a courier man bringing the award to you and it's you guys who did all the work. But apart from that I think it's a recognition for India because the American Diabetic Association recognizing somebody who lives in India and works in India. I think it's a great tribute to my country and therefore I'm very happy and pleased about it. They should be very proud. Well, let's discuss your research that was awarded. Um, you have focused on the epidemiology of diabetes in South Asians. What can you tell us you've uncovered? We used to refer to diabetes as a migrant Indian phenomenon, which means the diabetes prevalence is so low in India, but when they migrated to the United States, Canada, UK, Australia, anywhere, Fiji, uh, their uh, prevalence rates went up. So we said it's all because of the Western diet and they, they put on weight and, and that's what it is. But over the years, uh, the prevalence of diabetes in India has uh, increased so much and in South Asia. Pakistan is even higher than India now and Bangladesh and all the South Asian countries. So today, about uh, actually in 2015, we did a study comparing the prevalence of diabetes in India versus the Bay Area in California where Indians live. And to our surprise, we found it's actually higher in India than in California. So the clock has come full circle now, mm -hmm. and uh, the prevalence of diabetes in India is now higher than the migrant Indian. So it's no longer a migrant Indian phenomenon. So significant changes in the last 50 years that I've been working in this field, in the epidemiology of diabetes in South Asia. Incredible. I want to talk about some of the specific studies. Um, you've taken part in the CUPS, the CURES, and the ICMR India B uh, studies. How have those evolved, and what have you discovered about insulin deficiency? So we covered, you won't believe it, the whole country, representative population of 1.44 billion people, with a sample size of 124,000 people, probably the world's largest yeah. and most representative study uh, on diabetes. And probably that's one of the reasons why I got this award. So we actually evolved in stages from part of a city to a whole city to uh, the whole country. But of course, there are many other studies like the CAR study, which we collaborate with Emory University and uh, institutions in Delhi and also the PURE study, which uh, started actually in India, but now is in 27 countries, five continents, and, and 200,000 people followed for 15 years. So it's very small, but became bigger, bigger, right. bigger. Growing. As you get your epidemiology right, then you can do really big studies, which answer a lot of unanswered questions. And in particular, you've been able to pinpoint some of the risk factors for That's this right. population? Yes. So you mentioned uh, insulin uh, deficiency. So in the West, most of type 2 diabetes is associated with obesity. And so uh, we, uh, insulin resistance is the primary driver of uh, type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. What we found in South Asia is that definitely they are much, much thinner than the people with type 2 diabetes in the West. And insulin deficiency seems to be the driver and the most important factor. So that's one of the most important things we learned about South Asians, that more than insulin resistance, it's insulin deficiency. And we seem to lose beta cell function very quickly. So we've learned a lot, and the, ge the genetics seems to be somewhat different. We seem to have slightly different genes. And of course, the, one of the biggest drivers is the high carb diet. Right. The amount of <laughs> carbohydrate we eat in the form of rice right. and wheat is very high. So you've got all of this research, it's, it, your work is incredible. What do you hope that this research will continue to do when it comes to the fight against diabetes and cardiovascular disease? So having found the causes, the obvious thing to do is to try to prevent it. And we have worked out in mathematical models, which we're now doing trials on, to show that if you just cut the carbs a little bit and replace it with protein and a good quality uh, fat, as well as fiber, increase the exercise and perhaps reduce pollution. And of course, you have to sleep well, sleep on time. There are simple things, back to the basics, right. basically. And if we do that, we believe that 50% of new onset type 2 diabetes can be prevented. So the next few years will be devoted to these preventive studies and to get the policy of the government also changed to encourage healthy eating, increasing physical activity. Right. That's going to be my next uh, move. Well, wonderful. Well, congratulations on this award again and on all your incredible research. It's been a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you so much.